What's up everybody? You're here with the Fly Guy. Okay, today we're going to be covering uh, how to tie a simple drop shot rig on the fly rod for bass. This is not limited to bass. Um, I just use it a lot for bass because it's so versatile uh, and it helps me keep more flies in my box. Like I said, it's not limited. You can use this for trout uh, as well. I do a lot of drop shot nymphing for trout. Uh, when I am able to go uh, and help again it helps me keep more uh, nymphs in my box and I'm not throwing a lot of nymphs away uh, to the drink. Uh, this is actually kind of very similar to a Euro nymphing style uh, because you've got that dropper fly that is weighted and gets the other fly down. Uh, it's kind of a sacrificial fly. Instead with this uh, you're actually just using the shot uh, to get that fly down and then that fly hovers just above bottom or uh, maybe a foot above bottom in the strike zone. I will be posting future videos on how to fish this rig and how versatile it is on the water just to kind of show you some different situations where you could use it possibly in your home waters if you target bass or trout. If you'd like to see those videos go ahead and hit the button below subscribe and stay tuned. Okay, so this is pretty simple to do, so let's go ahead and get started. First, I just want to show the fly that I'm going to be tying for this rig uh, in this demonstration. Uh, this is a fly that I use a lot for bass. It's called the Sparkle Bunny, and it's just a great drop shot fly because it's got a lot of action, uh, a lot of materials that move on their own, uh, even when you're not doing anything to the fly. And that's super important because on a drop shot rig, you can you know drift with it too. You can nymph with it. Um, you know I've drifted this through runs uh, and caught some really nice smallmouth, uh, and I did absolutely nothing with the fly. Uh, and this bunny strip and the mallard flanks, um, along with the hackle and rubber legs. I mean they all just move great. If you are a tire and you'd like to learn how to tie this fly. Uh, I've got uh, a video out for that already. Uh, I will put a link in the description for it and there should be uh, something popping up in the video right now so you can click on that uh, after this video is over and you can check that out. Today I'm going to be using just some fly line backing uh, to tie this up. Uh, this is purely for uh, the demonstration just so you guys can see it. It's kind of a bright yellow. Um, if you are tying this, first things first, you need to be using fluorocarbon. It's really important to use fluorocarbon because it is abrasion resistant, it sinks quickly, and once it goes underwater, it's clear and invisible. So, when you're fishing a drop shot rig and you're trying to go after finicky fish that might have lockjaw or might be pressured, uh, I fish a lot of pressured bass, so I have to be kind of stealthy when it comes to my presentation sometimes. So, fluorocarbon gets the job done for me. If you are going to tie drop shot flies and use this method for bass, the main thing that you need to remember, tie them weightless. Do not add weight. No dumbbell eyes, no lead, no lead nothing. You need to be using, um, it doesn't really matter what materials you use so much, um, it just is important that you tie them without any added weight. Because the shot that you're going to add to the end of the leader is what's going to get the fly down. If you put weight in the fly, you've just defeated the purpose. Both are going to sink to the bottom, and you're probably going to lose both. Um, so make sure that you tie these flies weightless to achieve the best results. Okay, so I've cut off a couple uh, feet here of backing. I'm going to be using that to tie this up so you can see it. And the first thing you want to do, if this is the end of your leader, you want to make sure that you leave yourself plenty of room at the end to add a shot and to tie a perfection loop and I'll show you that here in a minute. So if I were using this leader I would go about three quarters of the way up the final piece of leader and if I were tying this with fluorocarbon I'd be using 10 or 12 pound test something kinda stout and uh, I would leave the rest out at the end okay so Here's the front end of this piece. I would just go down a little bit and you're going to form a loop. All right, now this loop is going to be fed through the eye of the hook.
Okay, so you've got your loop, and what you're going to do is feed that loop up through the bottom side of the hook eye. Do not feed it over the top. You want this hook to orient hook point up in the water column so that you get a good hookup percentage. If you have it the other way around, you won't get as many hookups, and you might even foul hook some fish in the long run. Okay, you're going to pull that loop up, and as you can see, I've got that tag end and the long. There's going to be two tag ends here, so you've got the short tag end and the long tag end sticking out here, and you've got this big loop, all right? So you're going to use that, and you're going to wrap that around these two sections, okay? So you're basically going to be forming almost an overhand knot. It's really simple. So you're going to go over the top. You're going to go over the top and feed that loop back through the loop that you created. Okay? And you want to make sure that when you do this that you keep it nice and clean. All right, so you might have to pull on sections of the loop here. I'm going to pull on this side to make sure that the loop that I have here doesn't have any strands sticking out in opposite directions because when I go to cinch that down, uh, that could be problematic for me. So I only go once. I don't go twice. There's no need to do it. Um, I find that if you try to do it twice, it might be a little bit more difficult for you to cinch down in the long run, and it doesn't really improve knot strength. And I haven't broken a fish off yet using this rig um, because of knot failure. Uh, I've broken fish off because they've run me into cover or, you know, it's just, it's been a big fish and you know, you know how the story goes. But um, the knot itself uh, will serve you well. So this loop that you've got now sticking out this back end of the overhand knot, you're literally just going to feed that fly th right through it. Now, after you feed it through, this can be a little tricky if you don't give yourself a big enough loop. So make sure that when you do this, that you give yourself a big enough loop to be able to feed that fly through at this step. And that takes a little bit of practice, so work on it. Okay, so now I've got that loop through. I've got that big loop sticking out. Now it's time to cinch down. Now, if you just pull this straight, you're going to see that knot's going to start closing up. But you've still got that loop. So, pull on the short tag end first. So you're pulling on the short tag end. If you're using fluorocarbon, make sure that you are moistening that line. Use water. Um, you know, get a cup of water if you're practicing at home or just, you know, dip it in the water in the, in the stream or the lake that you're fishing. Um, so go ahead and just start pulling on that short tag end and that loop will start to close up. Once it becomes about the same size as these other loops, okay, You've got them about the same size here. Now you can start tightening it down and make a nice clean knot. So now what you're going to do is take both tag ends and you're going to start cinching down. If at any time you feel that this loop right here by my thumb, my left thumb, is not cinching down, go right back to that short tag end and pull on it a little bit. And now it's cinching it up. Okay, so now we've got this nice clean knot right at the front of the hook and you can go ahead and tighten that up. Pull both tag ends firmly and make sure that your knot is up at the front of that hook eye. If you have a loop off to the side of the hook, all you got to do is just move it up front and keep tightening and it will work itself in. Uh, it is a little tricky at first. You might go through a little bit of line practicing, but it is a very secure and tight knot and it's not going to pull out. So now in order to get the hook riding the correct way in the water column, you're going to need to have this long tag end that you've been saving at the back side of the knot. You're going to need to take this and feed it down through the top of the hook eye. Okay? So you'll feed that down through and just pull it straight on down. Okay? Okay? 
now that you've got both of these set up, this short tag end, you can pre-tie these and attach them to a leader with a loop-to-loop -loop connection. You can, this is the short tag end I have in my hand here. So uh, the short tag end, you can do a loop-to-loop -loop connection to your leader setup, however long a leader you feel that you need to fish for the situation. Um, just make that loop-to-loop -loop connection and you can attach these uh, and have these pre-tied up uh, before you get out to the water. But this side, the long tag end, that is going to have the shot, I do something a little different. Uh, I actually tie a perfection loop in it, and this enables me to keep my, sh my split shot attached and secured for a longer period of time. Okay, so now we're taking that long end that we just fed down through the top of that uh, hook eye, and we're going to make a perfection loop. This is going to enable us to secure a split shot uh, easily and effectively and it's going to keep that split shot attached when you're casting and you won't be going through shot all day uh, this will just keep it stuck on there a little bit longer for you so you're just going to make a perfection loop I will be doing a video on how to tie this uh, specifically but I'll go ahead and show you right now it's real easy loop in your hand take the tag end loop it around your thumb and the loop that you created to begin with. You're going to feed that tag end back through in the center of those two loops, pinch it together, all right? And you're going to take and pull on this side of the loop here, and this is going to make it a little bit bigger for you, make it easier, okay? And you're going to feed the loop that's closest to you, that's small and kind of wrapped around your thumb a little bit, you're going to pull that through all right, get your pinky around it, and you're just going to pull it tight. Boom. You've got a perfection loop. It's a very easy knot to tie, and it, do, it does not pull out. I mean, it's, it's kind of impossible. It's, it, you'd have to have an immense amount of pressure on it, and the line would break beforehand anyway. So, you've got a perfection loop. I'm going to trim my tag end here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a split shot. Uh, I typically uh, use three-aught split shot uh, by Water Gremlin. This is something you can pick up at Walmart, really anywhere that uh, sells tackle. I'm going to take a three-aught split shot here. And I am going to attach that split shot on this perfection loop. Not above the knot, because I don't want it to damage the knot. I'd rather have that split shot fly off um, after a while of use uh, than just damage that knot and have to retie later. Um, so I go ahead and I put the first part of the perfection loop in the teeth of this removable split shot, put in the second piece of line on that perfection loop, and then I twist sideways. Okay, so now it's locked on there pretty well, but I go one step further. And whether you use hemostats on the water or you use pliers, uh, just take those pliers and really mash that split shot right onto the line. Now that's going to hold up for you for a while. Um, I typically don't go through really any shot while I'm out there fishing. Um, if I do, I'm out there for a long time. I mean, I only use a couple. Um, and it just keeps it attached securely for you so that you can fish and not, not have to worry about it flying off all the time. So this is how I create a drop shot rig for bass on the fly rod. You can see now if I pull up on the top end of the line, which is going to be attached to your leader, okay, I pull that up, I've got the fly, and then below it, okay, I run it up, and I've got this shot at the bottom. So this fly is going to sit just a little over a foot off the bottom, and it's going to hang and hover and be able to entice fish, and it's going to keep me out of bottom structure uh, where the fish aren't rooting around anyway. You know, they're going to be above or beside that structure to begin with, which means they're going to be up off of it a little bit. This is going to put that fly right in their face, and um, it's just a really good way to effectively catch bass and other fish as well.
I hope this video helped you, and I hope it helps you uh, get better at uh, tying this rig for bass, and I hope it helps you get into some more fish as well. I know it's worked for me, and I know it'll work for you too. It might take a little bit of practice, but if you're already into the sport of fly fishing, you know that practice is name of the game. So practice with, with this. Get proficient at it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I will also be posting this video uh, along with a short description on my blog at tfgflies.com. If you're not a tyer and you want to get this fly from me, I do tie these uh, for fishermen. You can get this uh, Sparkle Bunny Drop Shot Fly on my website as well. Uh, you'll look under my custom pattern section uh, under bass. If you like this video, go ahead and hit thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more fly fishing and fly tying content. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Take care, and we'll catch you next time.